If you've recently updated to the latest version of Adobe After Effects 2023, you might be wondering how to use the new track mat selection tools inside the timeline panel. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to use these new features and show you guys the cool things about them that really speed up your workflow. So I'm inside Adobe After Effects and I have a new lower third to remind you guys that if you like these videos that I post Premiere Pro and After Effects tutorials weekly, so be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you are interested. But I have this layer scaling up and I want to put these layers into that layer. That way it kind of hides it when it's not there and then it animates in. And the new way to do that, for example, if I wanted to put this After Effects logo inside that shape layer, you have a few options. You have the pick whip tool and you have a drop down menu. What you can do is click on the drop down menu and select the layer that you want as the alpha mat reference layer. In this case, it's going to be shape layer one. Now you might be wondering what's an alpha mat exactly. And if you're new to After Effects, I'm just gonna explain what it is. Essentially, when you assign a layer to an alpha mat layer, you're reading the other layer's opacity and bounds of the layer. So for example here, when I change it to shape layer, you'll notice that when I move the After Effects logo, it's reading that shape layer's opacity and the bounds of the layer. So if the After Effects logo isn't within that shape layer's bounds, it won't be visible. And for example, if I take the shape layer and I bring up opacity by hitting T and bring down the opacity, you'll notice that it disappears. So that's essentially what alpha mat does inside After Effects. Now what's really nice about this is you can use the pick whip tool to assign several layers to one single alpha mat layer. And to do that, just select the other layers and then click and drag the pick whip tool to that shape layer. And now all of these layers are referencing this one layer as the alpha mat layer. So just to show you, if I click and move this shape layer, you can see that it's all within that shape layer and it's reading its opacity and the shape bounds. Now one under underrated feature about this is that you can actually make the alpha mat layer visible while not disrupting the alpha mat reference. So for example here, I want these layers to read that shape layer's alpha mat reference, but I also want the shape layer to be visible. Well, you can unhide it and the layers above it still reference it as an alpha mat and the shape layer is also visible. So this really declutters your workflow a lot because otherwise you'd have to duplicate this layer several times, at least once, to have a visible and an invisible layer to reference the alpha mat of. And back in the old days, you'd have to make sure that the layer is above it. And in this case, you can change the order of any of these layers and it doesn't break the reference of the alpha mat reference, which is a really cool feature. Now, if you wanted to invert this, you what you can do is that there's an option to the right of this alpha mat button and this will invert the mat. So if you invert the mat for all of them, you can see that when we move this shape layer, that it's reading the inverted value of that. So instead of reading the shape layer's opacity and shape bounds, it's just inverting it. So wherever the shape isn't, that's where those layers are gonna be visible. Now, what if you wanted to actually switch it from alpha mat to luma mat? Well, that's where the alpha mat button comes into play. If you click this once, you'll notice that it changes from a square with a circle inside it to a staircase. And now it's reading it as a luma mat. And for example, if we take the shape layer and we change it to white, you'll notice that now it, you can see the layers and it's inside it. It's reading the shape layer's luminosity. And to invert it, very similarly, if, if you click the invert button to the right, you'll read the opposite of the luminosity and the shape bounds. Now you might be wondering what is a luma mat exactly, and I broke it down in a separate composition to show you. So in this composition, I have a text layer and I have a solid with a gradient ramp applied to it. And I'm gonna change the track mat to ramp and then change it to luma mat. And what you'll notice is that the text layer is only visible in the white areas or the lighter parts of the image. And it kinda falls off in, in between white and black. And when you put it into the black area, it's completely invisible. And that's because what's actually happening in a luma mat is that the layer is referencing the layer's luminosity. So not necessarily the opacity of the layer, but how bright it is. And when you invert it, it's actually putting it into the blacker, the darker parts of the image. So that's how luma mats work. 
So that's how to use the new track mat selection tools inside After Effects 2023. And if you're curious, there are a lot of new features that came out this year in After Effects. I did make a video going over my top five favorite new features. One of them is this feature, but check out all the other latest updates to After Effects. It's pretty cool. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.